thanks for having me. Yeah, you know, it was funny when I posted about um, this IG Live coming up, I had so many people comment, oh, I love him, I follow him on social media, I'm so glad you're gonna be talking to him. So you have quite a fan base. Well, that's awesome, I'm yeah. Yeah, the here. Well, well, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us, uh, I know you're a supervising librarian, maybe tell us how you got interested in being a librarian, and then maybe for those that don't know, what exactly does a supervising librarian do? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, my name is Michael Threets, and I'll, I'll tell you the best I can about supervising librarians. I've only been one for about um, six months, <laughs> so I only have so much um, experience to go on. Um, but yeah, my name is Michael Threets. I grew up in libraries, um, got my first library card when I was five years old um, from the library where I currently supervise. It's also where I got my very first library card. Um, I've been a library kid for as long as I can remember, a library loving person forever. Um, I was a homeschool kid, so I, I spent a lot of time with my mom um, and siblings at Solano County Library. Um, after a while, about, um, after pursuing different career trajectories, um, I, I think at a low point, I returned to the Fairfield Cordelia Library um, and asked them how I become, uh, how you can work for the library. At that time, I didn't know that there were other positions besides uh, librarians. Um, the person at the desk showed me how to apply. I think about five months later, I got hired as a shelver. I was a shelver for almost two years. Um, and then I think I saw like the library assistant, library aid um, information on the bulletin board. And I was like, you know what? I'll apply for this job. If I get this one, maybe the library life is fully for me, that job. Um, and at that point I realized it was for me, pursued all the library degrees, got my bachelor of science in communications, got my master of library information science degree. Um, and then I became a children's librarian for a couple of years. Um, I was a marketing librarian for a few years, working on social media, the website, outreach, um, a whole bunch of other fun things with awesome people. Um, and then I now, and then I was promoted to supervising librarian about six months ago. Um, and then to your question, what does a supervising librarian um, do? Um, a whole lot of things, but the biggest part is really just support um, for my awesome library team, um, working on work, working on schedules, working on um, time cards. Um, working with um, working through the different incidents and situations that happen at the library, um, having a bunch of conversations with people about libraries, um, and basically being a uh, cheerleader for library workers. That's wonderful. Well, we're so glad that you're doing. Is there something that, when you started to to work in the library to be a librarian, what what surprised you, or what's something that you think people don't don't know about being a librarian? Um, I. I think people don't realize how many different hats um, librarians and all library workers um, wear. Um, you know, we always joke about things that we didn't learn in library school. Um, like you, we know that we'd have to have um, some plumbing skills to work at the library <laughs> to work through um, those different um, issues that come with public restrooms. Um, and then just being, you know, being a jack of all trades. Um, we're not we're not mental health professionals, but. Um, because libraries are so adamant about um, libraries that being for everyone, everyone belonging, um, you end up just having different conversations with people at the desk, um, just in general, at the computers. Um, so we're not at all therapists, but I think a lot of people treat us like therapists. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, just a general, I think, um, things I didn't realize was how much um, people trust librarians with computer work. Um, we, always, we don't have any master passwords, but it's always amazing to, to hear how often people are willing to be like, here's my password, you type it in. <laughs> like, don't, don't give me your password, we'll figure it out together. <laughs> Computer. That's what I, I think librarians, they, that isn't, that's interesting about the passwords, but I think you do have a lot of trust from the community. At the same time, there are also probably a lot of misconceptions about it, but you spend a lot of time with, on, on social media, helping dispel those misconceptions and let people know that libraries are for everyone. What are some of the main things that you run across that you think people misunderstand? Uh, I think the main, the, I mean, the most famous one is that librarians don't get to, don't, don't get to read all day. Um, <laughs> there's many, read emails and different reports a lot all day, but we don't get to read uh, fiction and sci-fi and thrillers and listen to audiobooks um, throughout the day. So I think that's the biggest, the biggest misconception about um, librarians is that's, I, I think a lot of times when, I, when people tell me that they, that they want to work for a library. Um, I always think that's that's amazing. And people always say like, oh, I love books. I love to work for the library, which is of course a huge part. Um, but there's so much more that comes into it, especially in the modern modern library. Um, I like to talk about that. I'm, I'm very uh, privileged and lucky enough to work for a library that has a bunch of resources like 
uh, like video games, musical instruments, board games, mental health kits, um, parks passes, museum passes, uh, people don't know about. Um, even like even, even movies and TV shows, we have um, we have Abbott Elementary. Um, even when I think when I first started working for the library, even my dad didn't realize how many new, new movies we got. He always thought like the oldest Denzel Washington movie possible. <laughs> and movies that we had. Um, so just the fact that the library really is for everybody. Everybody everybody has something. That's why as much as I love books, um, when people come into the library and they say I don't like to read, I'm like that's fine. I'm still gonna make you fall in love. Um, with the library. So as much as I am eventually going to push them every single time to pursue a love of books, be it manga, um, graphic novels, um, biographies, um, dinosaur books, um, whatever it may be, um, there is just so much action in libraries. And even if a lot of libraries don't have what uh, my library is looking up to have, um, I encourage people to tell their library staff what they want. If they want a video game collection, if they want to see the new library, they let their library staff know um, for libraries a huge deal of support and things that we get comes from the public. So the more support we have, them, the more likely we are to get what you're asking for. Right. And, and, and I'm glad you brought that up about how libraries are not just about books. Like you said, there's so many things. I know we've gotten board games from the library, which was something I was really surprised or ours has um, like uh, subject boxes, like kits you could get for kids. If you have a kid that's really into dinosaurs, they had a whole kit of books and games and movies and everything related to dinosaurs. But um, I, I want to go back to what you're talking about, how everyone is welcome at the library, which I think is a message that people really need to hear now. What do you think it is about libraries and librarians that make them so unique as far as really being a space where everybody belongs? Oh, I, I think it, it's, it's very unique in that I think if I always see different tweets and memes about like if a library was, if someone tried to create libraries today, uh, it would never pass. Um, it would never just because libraries are. I mean, people always, whenever I say free, I think almost someone's always going to comment or mention how about taxes and different things that go into it. But, um, but truly, libraries are like, like libraries are free. There is no limitation. Um, you don't even need a library card to enter the library. You can read books at the library. Um, we have computer passes at the library. Uh, you can just sit at the library. Um, it's a place where you can just be. Um, and I think that's why people feel so safe at the library. Um, I'm the first to admit that every library is not necessarily the safest place in the world, um, just because of um, just because of how life is, and that there's only so many people, and library workers only have so much authority. Um, but we do we do the best we can, um, and we do encourage everybody to come in. Um, it is a safe place for a safe place as far as library workers are concerned. We're not we're not the enemy. We're not going to put you in jeopardy. We're going to do everything we can. Um, I try to get library cards for everybody. Um, there are certain rules to get, or like rules and guidelines to get library library cards. But I like I love to do whatever I can. I'm always trying to find a way to get people what they need. Um, and I think um, that's exactly how other library workers are. Um, I think everybody sees um, the, the the messages I put out, and a lot of that is just because I'm the supporter of libraries and all the rest of the staff and workers are doing the amazing work. Um, and I just get the privilege of um, applauding their uh, remarkable efforts. Uh, so I think that's a long way of saying, I think it's just, it's it's because it's free. It's because there are no expectations. You can just be, you don't need a single uh, single quarter in your pocket. Um, you can just come in, browse. Um, people like me are gonna bother you and they're gonna say hi, but you can just mind your own business um, and enjoy everything that the library has to offer. And, 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 and so you, I've gotten a lot of comments here about how helpful your videos are and how positive they are. And one of the things I love is you always talk about all these incredible people that you meet at the library, the different people that come in and conversations that you have. Do you have any favorite stories from, um, from people that have come into the library? Um, I, th I think though my, not necessarily, I think my favorite, my favorite story that isn't necessarily um, coming to the library, but when I was a children's librarian, um, I used to do a lot of outreach and do different story times. Um, that's my first, I think, first, first started sharing um, the unhinged little people stories that I got to hear. Um, is usually my hair is in a um, is in a giant afro, um, and they would often often see that. And I remember one uh, one day when the kids lost lost uh, one of their teeth, um, and uh, they walked up to me and they just said, "I'm going to see you tonight, right?" Um, and I was like, "That's a weirder thing than usual to say. I don't know what you mean by that." 
um, and they repeated it, and uh, then I think I verbally said, I, I, I don't think so. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, and they're like, you're the, you're the tooth fairy. You have your pretty princess hair. I'm going to see you tonight for my, for my that tooth fairy month. So I think that my favorite, um, favorite comment is that because of my supposed pretty princess hair, I was a tooth fairy to that particular child. I love it. And I have to say, it is so refreshing to see. You don't really see that many male, at least not where we are, any men librarian, especially that, that I know there's a big push to have more people of color librarians. So I think diversity in librarians, I'm sure, is also something that people are responding to. Um, and I was also wondering about, you know, I, I think people don't realize in some ways how radical librarians are in terms of making sure people have access to books, making sure um, your privacy is protected. I know there was a big struggle over that, especially, you know, more like 20 years ago with the Patriot Act, but I know that continues um, to protect people's privacy as far as what you check out from the library, that that's not anybody else's business and what you want to, um, what you want to read and having access to those books. And, and I know you're, you're in Northern California, so maybe it's a different political situation than say like Texas or Florida, but is that, or, are you facing pressures as far as book bans, or do you hear stories about that from other libraries? What kind of what kind of pressures are you guys facing? Uh, my library has been very lucky in that we haven't had a lot of um, specific challenges um, towards us. We did, I think, last year we did a whole um, banned books month celebration instead of banned books week, um, just to emphasize how important uh, reading banned books are and the freedom to read read is. Um, and we did receive a couple of comments. Um, in the library, just from people but kind of like being a little bit disgruntled and wondering why we had all those, um, all those books up there. Um, but for the most part, we haven't received any um, any direct challenges. Um, however, there are some school districts in the area who have unfortunately seen those book challenges, and they've had to put together various committees to see if they can make sure that students still have access to those books, um, the access that they deserve. Um, but I think um, in, a, in a bigger picture, I think whenever there's book challenges, whenever there's book bans, um, it becomes a fight for all, all librarians and all library workers and all libraries. So we're all trying to uh, come together and fight for each other so that um, everybody across the, uh, Christ, across the United States um, and across the world can have access to the books um, that they deserve to read, um, books that represent, represent them. Um, because I think as a lot of us know that oftentimes there is never any reason for these books to be truly banned. Um, it's just people making assumptions. They almost never read these books that they're banning. They just either hear about them with a simple blurb on Google um, or an angry person on Twitter instead of a positive, happy person um, on Twitter or TikTok. Um, even I think the latest one that I heard about was um, Amanda, sorry for my cat's tail being red. <laughs> <I love it. laughs> the, the other one that I heard is um, Amanda, Amanda Gorman's um, The Hill We Climb, her inaugural poem book was banned um, and that is literally a message of unity and togetherness and finding the light in all of us. So if Amanda Gorman's books and poetry can be banned and um, there really is no guidelines or rules on what they're doing, they're just, um, they're just afraid, um, which um, I think is, that's not hilarious. Hilarious is a bad word for it, but I think they don't even, they're worried about their children, but their children are perfectly fine. Their children love those books. Um, again, my, when I'm being a children librarian, being a marketing librarian, going out and out amongst, amongst the schools and the different sites. Um, I loved um, the, uh, uh, the children's librarian before me at the Springtown Library, started a mobile library at one of the, one of the schools, um, and then I took it up. And I remember lugging that suitcase full of books at schools, having all sorts of different books, um, and seeing the different kids be so excited to see, um, see, uh, see the cover of the books and see just different, uh, some kids that looked like them, some kids that didn't look like them. Um, one of my favorite um, favorite times of that is seeing one kid be like, hey, look, this book looks look just like you. You should check it out. <laughs> um, other kids telling me like, oh, I want to check this out because it looks like my friend. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that is the power of, of diverse books. It's not trying to teach anybody anything. It's not trying to indoctrinate them to start a cause. Um, the only cause is just joy through those books. It's just trying to get them to love one another, which they already do if we give them the chance. Right. And I just want to mention some of the comments that have gone when you were talking. You just got an invitation to come and explore the libraries in the UK. 
<laughs> and somebody else has that you are always so positive and that's something everybody knows knows you for do you ever get annoyed like do you ever have some interactions that just really get under your skin um i do i actually i actually i think i get um annoyed and i i think i'm unpositive uh, well i always try to be positive but um i think a lot of my videos are about um, mental health um and i still suffer from severe anxiety and depression um, and nightmare disorder. So a lot of the times, um, if I create a video that's um, like a mental health message, um, it's either for myself, it's either kind of like telling myself what I would like to hear um, and just seeing if it works for other people, just in case, um, or it means that someone has asked me to um, create a message, uh, which I always appreciate that people uh, are willing to reach out to me. Um, so yes, I do. There are, there are some times in the library where it gets a little bit, where it does get frustrating. Um, I think that's, that is, I think earlier we asked about um, roles of being a supervisor. I think that's the most times where I get, um, get annoyed and frustrated is when um, my team is frustrated and deals with things that they shouldn't have to deal with or um, people are verbally, verbally abusive to um, probably the kindest people in the world is when I get frustrated. But um, otherwise, I'm just trying to create a place of um, positivity um, for those situations so that um, people like me and other people can rely back on it um, and keep on going um, each day at a, one day at a time yes and, and and I just there were more comments about how much people appreciate your videos and how you're always so authentic and genuine in the videos and I, I know I really appreciate all the ones that you do on mental health topics because I think you are somehow you manage to say positive and authentic at the same time and I think people relate to it because they, they recognize that you're being genuine a lot of times, you know, when we see those really positive messages, but it seems really kind of fake and hard to relate to, then it turns people off. But yours, you have that way of doing it in a way that people can still really relate to. And it seems it's very genuine. Um, I did want to go back to when you were talking about like book bans and unfortunately the frustrations your librarians face, even just individuals being verbally abusive. Everybody watching here, I think, is a fan of libraries and really loves librarians. So what, what can we do as a community to support libraries and our librarians more, especially in the time of book bans or just in general? What kind of things can, can we do as the public to support you and your work? Um, I think the first best thing is to go, is to go get a library card mm -hmm. to, to make sure that libraries um, continue to exist, um, but also not only to exist, but to thrive. Um, and just to support uh, support your local libraries, um, go to the go to the events, go to the programs. Um, my library just did a touch a, touch a truck, or like if you can't say touch a truck, Fairfield a Fairfield Fairfield Trucks Day program yesterday, where there were fire trucks. Um, the the ambulance was there, tractors were there. Um, the local military base brought a couple of their vehicles by. Um, there's animal shows. Um, the Vallejo Library did a um, a punk library show, a punk rock library show not too long ago. Um, so yeah, I just encourage you to, to um, learn about your local library, support the fun things that they're offering. Um, even if you can't, can't go all the time, just getting that library card first uh, is important. Um, even if you're just like, I'm in too much of a hurry, I don't know, I don't want to go through all the steps, which there aren't many, it only ever takes maybe five to 10 minutes max to get a library card. Um, even just visiting your local library, um, just tell the local librarians how much you support them, um, all the library work not just librarians, um, let them know how um, impactful they are on the world. Um, and then just contact your uh, your local governments, just keep on reminding them how important libraries are, library workers are. Um, and then I know that um, so, like, so a lot of social media is a negative place, but um, just utilize social media to your advantage too for library support. Um, especially on Twitter, there's a big um, book, book Twitter um, mm. audience people who promote their work. That's how often how I find out about um, very cool books and illustrations or illustrators who are working on things coming soon. Um, and they'll tell you when their book is gonna come out. So, so yeah, get a library card, go to library events, tell library workers how much you love them, um, and then use the resources at your disposal um, to support libraries and just make sure that all the uh, government officials know how much you care about libraries and library workers. Love that. Those are all very doable things that we can do. And I just want to end because I don't want to take up too much of your time, but um, we do so appreciate you joining us today. And I would love to know what are you reading now and what books are you excited to recommend to your patrons when they come in? Um, 
Mark. So right now I am re I am reading a book called um, Ebony Gate by I believe her name is uh, their name is Julia V uh, V E E. Um, it is essentially it takes place in San Francisco, um, sort of a, uh, a female John Wick um, from a different dynasty um, coming uh, coming to San Francisco, um, and basically it takes it kind of takes a role of her kind of being like a retired retired assassin. She's going to come forward. Um, kind of restore her family's honor and have to go back and use all the tools um, that she has at her disposal. So I'm only a few pages in, but um, I'm already hooked um, and I'm getting ready to read um, CJ Tudor's newest book um, with my uh, with the Instagram Instagram uh, book club that I'm a part of um, with Melanie. I think, her, I think I should know, her, know it, but yeah, Melo Reads on Instagram. Um, I'm very excited. She's one of my favorite persons. So I've, met, uh, I've met a lot of very cool people through her book club. We've read all of uh, C.J. Tudor's books. C.J. Tudor's kind of like the uh, Stephen King, um, or she's like the female Stephen King of the world. So if you need a thriller, that's the one to go to. Um, and then books I recommend at the library. Um, lately, are it's, it's always Raina Togemeyer. Um, I think Raina Togemeyer has never gone wrong for me with recommendation um, for both um, boys and girls. Um, they all love it. Um, Tristan Strong punches a hole in the sky um, through Rick Reardon. Um, it's always a success. Um, Spider-Man is always a hit. I think Jason Reynolds just just came out with a new um, a new uh, graphic novel about Miles Morales. Um, so I'm excited to recommend that. Um, I think I just started recommending a bunch of uh, Nick Stone's books to people. Um, and of course, uh, Poke Pokemon is always my go-to um, if there's a reluctant reader. Um, otherwise, I tend to just uh, for kids. I tend to I tend to rely upon what they're wearing. Um, when they come into the library, they're usually wearing their favorite thing, be it on their hat, their shirt, their backpack, um, or their shoes. I think I've seen a thousand PJ Mask shoes when it's in, in the same six months of being a supervising librarian at my library. That's so true. I love that because that, that, that's so true about kids. I'll have to remember that because they always like they have their favorite T-shirt or their shoes or backpack, like you said. That's, that's <laughs> definitely true for kids. Well, thank you so much for joining us and for all, sharing all that you do on social media. I know you've really touched so many people and, and thanks to all of the librarians at your branch and, and all across the country. We really appreciate everything you're doing. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for inviting me. It was an honor to be talking with you. I look forward to more conversations.